What is going on, everyone, and welcome back to Cantina Talk. What is going on, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. This is a breakdown of the new official Ahsoka trailer. I'm going to break down this trailer shot by shot for everything that you might have missed or overlooked. Without further ado, let's just get right into this trailer breakdown. War is inevitable. One must destroy in order to create. So, we see a shot of Balin and Shin's ship that is very reminiscent of the Imperial Lambda-class shuttles that were used during the reign of the Empire. This shuttle looks to be approaching a New Republic transport ship. So then we get a voiceover of Balin saying that war is inevitable. This is accompanied with the shot of their ship from the previous trailer that was docked in the docking bay with the ramp coming down. We all believe that this might have been Thrawn greeting Captain Pelion or Ahsoka greeting the New Republic. This turned out to be Balin and Shin landing onto the ship. We see Balin and Shin, lightsabers activated. Balin is talking to the New Republic officer while Shin runs off towards the New Republic soldiers. We then see more of Balin's iconic hallway scene, along with him force pushing New Republic officers into a row of A-Wing fighters. These are in fact New Republic soldiers based off of the clothing they're wearing. This is also the same clothing that we saw Lant Devon wear in Mando Season 1, played by Matt Lantier, aka Anakin Skywalker. Moving on to the next part. We are no Jedi. I started hearing whispers of Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. We then see Balin say to the New Republic officer, we are no Jedi. This is right before he pierces his saber savagely through his chest and out through his back. When I first saw this in the trailer, it gave me chills. This is extremely reminiscent of the Old Republic and the Knights of the Old Republic cinematic trailers that we got for the games. This is also a callback to when Ahsoka fights Darth Vader on Malachor 5 and Rebels, and Darth Vader tells Ahsoka that revenge isn't the Jedi way, and then she responds with, I am no Jedi. We are then greeted with the beautiful red Lucasfilm logo, followed up by the shot of Ahsoka in the presumed Jedi Temple, looking up that we have gotten in previous trailers, along with a voiceover from her stating, I started hearing whispers. The next shot we get is a figure engraved into the wall, presumably in the same temple, but also very reminiscent of the engravings on the wall of the archaeological site in Rebels where Ezra unlocked the gate to the World Between Worlds. This engraving also looks very similar to the daughter from the Mortis Arc in the Clone Wars. This was also on the engravings in the World Between Worlds archaeological site, and more on that later. We also get Ahsoka continuing the dialogue of I started hearing whispers of Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. This is accompanied by the shot of the previous trailer of Thrawn walking on his and Morgan Ellsworth's ship towards the middle of the flight deck, which I might be mistaken, but in the middle right side of it, it looks almost like Mount Tantus on the planet Wayland. I could be wrong, but this also looks very similar to Wayland during Bad Batch. The next shot we see is of Balin and Shin in their ship in the background, walking up to these ancient ruins that look somewhat similar to the Seeing Stone area that was on Tython. There's also red stained stone behind the ship, but I'll be having more on that later. Moving on to the next part of the trailer. What happens when we find Thrawn? Power. Such as you've never dreamed. We see a shot of Shin walking and presumably talking to Morgan Elsbeth at the ruins. And with that, she's asking Morgan Elsbeth, what happens when we find Thrawn? In the background, we are also greeted with the red forest behind them. This is the same forest where we see Ahsoka, Sabine, and the Inquisitor, and Shin all fighting in the trailer. I do believe, though, that this is going to be early on in the show since they have not found Thrawn yet. So those fights are going to come back later in the show. Balin then responds to Shin's questioning by stating power such as you have never dreamed. While this is taking place, it looks like Morgan Elspeth might be using some sort of Night Sister magic by the looks of the green flame underneath the projection of the galaxy that is activating the ruins. I'm honestly starting to believe and lead towards more and more that Morgan Elspeth might actually be a Night Sister, one of the ones that survived. This is very Worlds Between Worlds esque in a way that it brings up the projection of the galaxy. I believe, though, that this is going to be sort of like a path or a guide. Kind of like the path to Luke Skywalker with the Wayfinder. Based off of how the dome looks at first, my first impression was that this was the gate between the world between worlds, but now looking closer into it, I am under the impression that this is actually a star map, and the golden rings around it could be coordinates slash units of measurement. This would make a lot of sense with Thrawn being gone either in the new beyond or the unknown regions. They would have to figure out how to navigate through it so that they could locate Thrawn. The next shot we get is of Shin aboard a New Republic ship, presumably the same one they landed on earlier in the trailer. She is seen entering the flight deck with her lightsaber activated. This is super reminiscent of Luke's entrance in the season 2 finale of The Mandalorian. Moving on to the next part of the trailer. 
I've spent most of my life fighting a war. That's why I'm trying to convince you to help me prevent another one. You and I both know who could help you with this. She's still just as stubborn as ever. Okay, so next we have a shot of the New Republic fleet. Very briefly, it looks like they might be in orbit around the planet Corvus. I'm not a thousand percent sure about this. It really could be any planet at night, but it really does look similar to Corvus. We get the same shot we have seen of Hera and Chopper the war criminal flying the Phantom and shooting some sort of transport ship that looks to be like it's carrying something of value to them. Along with a voiceover from Hera saying, I've spent most of my life fighting a war, and that's why I'm trying to convince you to help me prevent another one. Hera seems to be addressing a new Republic Council, especially since Mon Mothma is there. Mon Mothma also looks to be a little bit aged since Andor. This is also very true to Hera and her character. She grew up on Ryloth during the Battle of Ryloth and the Clone Wars. This is where she found Chopper. Her entire life has been jumping from one battle to the next, and I'm really glad that they're paying homage to that. We then see Ahsoka and Hu Yang walking down the ramp of her ship while Hera is approaching them. This appears to be on a New Republic ship as well. Hera and Ahsoka then appear to be having a conversation that is pertaining to Sabine, with Ahsoka stating that she is just as stubborn as ever. We are then greeted by Sabine looking at Ahsoka's ship flying over Ezra's tower and landing in to Lothal City. Now, moving on. I bet your master found you difficult at times. Anakin never got to finish my training. I walked away from him, just like I walked away from Sabine. You never made things easy for me. Master. So then we see a ship flying over Lothal's highway, and it looks to be chasing slash in pursuit of Sabine. This is accompanied by a voiceover of Hera talking to Ahsoka, saying, I bet your master found you difficult at times. Along with a side profile shot of Sabine on a speeder with the same ship in the background. Sabine is seen wearing a helmet with some Arabesh writing on it, which translates to Besh Inth Besh, along with a loath cat that is drawn on the backside of it. We then see a shot of Ahsoka talking to Hera on a hollow projection, saying, Anakin never got to finish my training. I walked away from him just like I did Sabine. This is a direct callback to when Ahsoka left the Jedi Order in the Clone Wars and had walked away from Anakin. And this is also very true to Ahsoka's character. It seems like time and time again, she has walked away from multiple things. We then see a shot of Sabine in the same tower in Lothal City where the mural is located. And it seems to be that her and Ahsoka are talking. We then see Ahsoka and Sabine sitting at a table, presumably on Ahsoka's ship. We actually saw a behind the scenes photo of Dave Filoni directing Rosario Dawson a couple months back at the same setting. And with that, we see Sabine saying to Ahsoka, you never made things easy for me. This leads me to believe that Ahsoka had taken Sabine on as an apprentice sometime after Rebels had ended. Dave Filoni has come out stating that Sabine is not force sensitive, so that I believe Ahsoka might have been trying to finish Kanan's training with Sabine, since she still has Ezra's lightsaber and is trained by Kanan how to use a lightsaber. We also have a hollow map of what looks to be the place where we see Ahsoka enter the temple in the first teaser trailer. There are four red arrows here as well, pointing to different parts and different pillars of this ruins area. I believe that this is where Sabine has marked locations for her to place explosives, being that she is a demolitions expert, and that later on in the trailer we see that this place gets blown up. I believe that they are planning to blow up the temple after getting whatever information they need out of it. I'm going to have more on this later in the video. We then see Sabine on the same speeder, almost laying it down to slide under one of the ships that was in pursuit of her, just barely making it without hitting the ship. With that, we see Ahsoka standing up, turning around, and giving her the side eye slash glance. I thought this was really cool to see, and it's definitely interesting, and I can't wait to see more of what this entails. But without further ado, we're moving on to the next part. As a Jedi, sometimes you have to make the decision no one else can. But I'm counting on you to see this through. Nice haircut. Finally, we get the reveal of Ezra Bridger. I know that we saw two shots of him in this hollow projection in the first trailer, but I know a lot of people have been speculating that she is actually talking to Ezra, but this isn't the case. This is Ezra's hollow message from the last episode of Rebels. This was during his sacrifice to save and liberate Lothal. Ezra is saying, as a Jedi, sometimes you have to make the decision that no one else can, but I'm counting on you to see this one through. This was part of Ezra's speech and his sacrifice during the end of Rebels. And I just have to say, Iman Asfandi sounds so much like Taylor Gray's Ezra. I generally thought that at first they had Taylor Gray in to do the voice. So big props to Iman Asfandi. During Sabine replaying this message, we see her sitting in front of her helmet as she grabs a knife to cut her hair. She's very much invoking Kanan when he cuts his hair in Rebels right before his tragic demise. I mean, she's literally doing the same exact pose as well, so it's very cool to see. Sabine then cuts her hair while looking at her helmet. Then we see Sabine in front of the mural from the epilogue of Rebels while Ahsoka is telling her that she has a nice haircut. 
We still do not know where Ezra is. My bet is that he's somewhere in the unknown regions with Thrawn. Now onto the next part of the trailer. Sometimes we have to do what's right, regardless of our personal feelings. <laughs> Buckle up. If we don't stop Thrawn, everything will be in vain. So we get Ahsoka, Sabine, and Huyang jumping in the hyperspace along with the revealed date of August 23rd. We then see Ahsoka fighting one of Morgan Elsbeth's guards along with the Inquisitor. In my previous video, I actually called this out. We got a behind the scenes photo of Ahsoka fighting the Inquisitor that was unmasked with a male in a mocap suit behind her that was fighting with a staff. This was also covered in blue screen for the background, but based on the water on the floor, as well as the shot of Ahsoka killing the droid from the begin trailer, I put two and two together. And to my surprise, I was right. This is followed up by a shot of Sabine walking up to the mural and touching Ezra's face with her finger. This is accompanied by a voiceover of Ahsoka saying, sometimes we have to do what's right, regardless of our personal feelings. We then see Sabine in Ahsoka's ship, shooting the tail gun at a ship that's in pursuit of them. I believe this is the one of the two ships that is in pursuit of them, before they are greeted by the Pergil. Speaking of the Pergil, we finally get the reveal of Pergil in live action. We saw them in the Mandalorian Season 3, but only through hyperspace and it was from a far distance away. We finally get the full scale of these insane creatures. These are absolutely freaking massive. Rebels, in my opinion, did not do them enough justice in, in terms of their scale and the sheer size of them. We then have Ahsoka's ship flying directly toward the mouth of the Pergil, with her telling Sabine to buckle up. Ahsoka is also wearing a white uniform, presumably a New Republic flight suit, but I am not entirely sure why. I also noticed that Sabine wasn't wearing her Mandalorian armor here. Like I said earlier, there were two ships in pursuit of Ahsoka and Sabine. This is the final ship that is in pursuit of them while flying around the Pergil. We then see the absolute giant tentacles of the Pergil. It is insane to see these just based off of the sheer size alone. If you have a second, look at Ahsoka's ship here and just look at the size of the ship compared to the tentacles. This is absolutely insane. These creatures are freaking massive. Ahsoka is then talking to Sabine in her ship, telling her that if you don't stop Thrawn, everything will be in vain. We then get the reveal of Lars Mikkelsen's live action Thrawn. We saw a picture of his reveal a couple months back, but this is truly insane. Thrawn looks incredible. Not only this, but his eyes are perfect, just like in Rebels. His pupils are a brighter red, and the outer parts are more of a darker red and menacing. Also, shout out to Jar Jar Jargon. He pointed out that to the left of Thrawn, it looks like there's some sort of stormtrooper. I actually think this looks a lot like the clone's flight helmets in the opening of episode 3 during the Battle of Coruscant. I also saw something about this possibly being an undead soldier. This is just a theory though, so take it with a grain of salt. Moving on to the trailer once again. You have no power. Anakin spoke highly of you. I'm not here to discuss my past. So then we get a shot of Sabine and the Red Forest. And with this, she, is, she has her hand held out as she's lying on the ground, obviously defeated by Shin. Either she is trying to beg for her life, which isn't like Sabine, or she might be trying to use the Force, which is more likely followed by the line from Shin stating, you have no power. Shin is also staring at her like a wolf gloating at its prey. This is honestly frightening and I can't see what the scene entails. And then we get a shot of Sabine and Shin locking lightsabers. This is presumably before she is knocked to the ground. Next, we get a shot of Ahsoka walking up to Balin in the ruins area. I believe this is the same planet as where the Red Forest is, and either this is after she has incapacitated the Inquisitor or has disarmed him, especially since we see later on in the trailer that she fights him in the forest. I believe that this Inquisitor is actually Ezra, and she finally had either gotten to him or was able to disarm him and had captured him. He's probably in the forest on Ahsoka's ship with Sabine. I also believe with this shot that Balin is almost like the final boss fight in a way. And with that, we see behind Balin more of the ruins and them being activated and accompanied by lights and other things that look to be trying to help them navigate through the star map. Balin very much seems to be guarding this place as it might be the final key to Thrawn and he's the only thing standing in Ahsoka's way from getting to him. Balin says to Ahsoka, Anakin spoke highly of you. This is accompanied by the sound of Darth Vader's breathing. This means that Balin is in fact a survivor of Order 66 and had known Anakin before the fall of the Republic. Behind Ahsoka, we see the Red Forest, as well as her and Balin fighting. Ahsoka then states, presumably to Balin, before they start fighting, I am not here to discuss my past. This is followed up by a shot of Ahsoka running away from the Jedi Temple area that we had seen earlier in the trailer. This is also the same place where the hollow map on her ship had all the red arrows. I believe Sabine had detonated explosives after they retrieved whatever artifact they went there to find. Now onto the final part of the trailer. We have a lot of work to do. Once a rebel, always a rebel.
We are then greeted by Huiang, that states, we have a lot of work to do. This is followed by Hera flying a ship, stating, once a rebel, always a rebel. We then see Sabine, Hera, Ahsoka, and Huiang all on the same ship together. Next, Sabine is outside of Ahsoka's ship, firing a cable at one of the human guards from Morgan Elsbeth's town and wrapping him up in it. This is also taking place in the Red Forest, presumably before she goes and fights Shin. We then see Ahsoka fighting the Inquisitor, as well as the guard in the shipyard area. I believe that this is Morgan Elsbeth's shipyard that she owns. After that, we see Ahsoka and Huyang flying our ship to a planet where the Red Forest is located. While this is happening, she's also being in pursuit of two fighters. We get a very brief shot of Hera shooting her blaster in the same room that Ahsoka has previously jumped out of the window in in past trailers. I will be having a video on this setting on this planet later this week, so stay on the lookout for that one. This is then followed up by a shot of Balan and Shin's Imperial Shuttle that looks to be shooting at Ahsoka on the same platform where she was fighting the Inquisitor and the Droidon. Intriguingly, Ahsoka also looks like she's running towards the blaster fire, which is kind of odd, but I'm very keen to see what is going to happen. This is then followed by a shot very similar to the Grand Inquisitor in Kenobi, where the Inquisitor is in the Red Forest, spinning his lightsaber while looking at Ahsoka. Ahsoka has her saber drawn, but it's behind her head. This is very odd since it is leaving her body fully exposed, but she has done this twice to previous Inquisitors, whether it was her grabbing the hilt of said Inquisitor and deactivating their lightsabers, or sticking both of her lightsabers in the middle of the hilt, destroying the saber. With that though, we only see Ahsoka using one lightsaber here, so I'm not too sure on this one. The next shot is of Ahsoka and the Inquisitor lunging at each other and performing a saber lock. We then get a cut to black with the title card of the show, leaving us with getting a two episode premiere on August 23rd. This also means that we are only going to be getting six weeks of Ahsoka, which will end on October 4th. This is going to be an absolutely insane six weeks that is jam-packed with the best Star Wars content since Mandalorian Season 2. With all that being said, let me know what you guys think about this trailer. I had goosebumps the entire time I saw this, as well as got teary-eyed a couple times. If you guys want to see my live reaction to the trailer, go ahead and click here in the top right of the screen to see my live reaction. I'm very excited to see what you all think is going to happen with the show. I'm also extremely excited. I am and still will continue to be on the Ezra is the Inquisitor train. I was one, if not the first one to come out with this theory, and I'm honestly starting to believe that it might be true with each trailer that keeps coming out, revealing more and more about the Inquisitor. Lastly, let me know what you all think in the comments down below. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And with that, may the force be with you all.